let me just show you guys what um what I what I got throughout all of it. We know that I have no um like uh, restraint whatsoever. Hey, hello, team. My name is Monique. Welcome back to the Cold Red, where we today are gonna go through what I have hauled in the last six months. <music> you didn't know this is book which is my channel and i was on a book buying ban from the month of january till mm -hmm, till march and then i went slightly crazy in april and obviously even though i was mainly on a buying ban i did still get some books in so in the beginning i was gonna do a what i hauled doing my book buying ban video but that's like two months ago and then i hauled a lot in april and then i was like then i would have to do another whole video and now we're in the two-thirds way through june so um let's just let's, let me just show you guys what um what i what i got throughout all of it and i'm aware of the fact that there are some books here there's quite a few i think there's around 70 maybe i need to count afterwards but I'm just I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm not gonna walk through the books that I got via NetGalley because I actually did a uh, showing off my NetGalley shelf video, which I will link down below if you are interested. And um, let's just there's a lot of uh, new releases here. There's a lot of uh, secondhand books as well. So not all of these are firsthand, but um, yeah, some of them are gifts. I have split them into months, so. Let's start with January, shall we? In the month of January, I was good. Okay, I hauled only four books in January. One of them was a gift. This is the German edition of A Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which is one of my favorite books of all time. This was a gift from my girlfriend because it is a edition that I have been talking about for absolutely forever. Also, she did not know that it was split in two. Don't be surprised if um, I at one point also get the other half of it, which is just regular yellow. But yeah, I didn't pay for this. This is mine. It's just so pretty. And it's this blue and it's the second half in German, um, which I vaguely used to know how to read. I, uh, I can't anymore. So it's just for collecting heartwarming purposes. Next book I got was a pre-order. This is Winterkeep by Kristen Cashaw, which is the fourth book in the Graceling series. This book came out many, many, many years after the first three. It is a series that holds my heart dearly and I absolutely loved this book. It ended up being a five star for me. I don't know how much I'm actually going into what each book is about. You're welcome to look them up. I also won't put them all downstairs because there's just too many, but... It was worth it and I loved it a lot. Next we have Law by Alexander Bracken. This is the Owl Crate edition, so it came in a subscription box, which was the one thing that I was allowed to still have doing my book buying ban. It's very stunning. I did end up reading this. It's just white sort of underneath. I did end up reading this. I enjoyed it. I wasn't crazy about it, but I did enjoy parts of it. I think I ended up giving it three stars. The next book is Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell, which is another book from a subscription box. This one is from Lumicrate. It has beautiful green edges. This is Queers in Space in the very best way. It has an arranged marriage trope. It is a male-male romance. It's slow burning. It's so good. Pretty sure I ended up giving this four or five stars as well. And I, just, I really, really love this one. You getting it? Murdered! Accidentally! Might be for you! Let's move on to February, where I did sort of slightly stumble, but I did not actually buy that many books. I mainly spent money in February on buying a hardcover set of the Akatar series. Oh, I just scratched myself real hard there by Sarah J Mass, so that I could put these very stunning Illumicrate dust jackets on them once I got them. It was also the month that um, Sarah J Mass, The Court of Silver Flames came out, so I also have a special tour edition of that because I sat in on like a live Zoom meeting thing. But yeah, look at how stunning they are, they're so pretty. Um, that was mainly what I spent money on in February, but I did get um, a few other pre-orders. 
First off, I got a copy of The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna, which is a book that I have been highly anticipating. It was meant to be out in 2020. It ended up not being. This is a special uh, Waterstones uh, sprayed edges one. Have I read this yet? No, but I have only heard amazing things, so I am ready. Next, I got another book from an Illumicrate subscription box, and that is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. I recently read this one. I enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it three, 3.5 stars. I really love the magic, and I love the, like, idea of uh, urban fantasy in more of a, like, YA setting. However, there's some of the characters that let it down a little bit for me, but I am excited about continuing the series. Next, I also got a very beautiful uh, Illumicrate edition of Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo, which is a very, very stunning look at this, um, because we know that I have no, um, like, uh, restraint whatsoever on things. Okay, let's move on to March. Once again, I was quite good in March about not really buying books while on, still on my buying ban, but a few did sneak past. First off, we have my monthly Illumicrate. This is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, which is one of my most loved books that I have read so far this year. It is sharing the first place of my favorite read. This is like a stunning female, female military adult fantasy. It has absolutely everything, including Terrain's arms on the cover. This is the stunning Illumicrate edition. I love it so much. And um, I just, yeah, I want everyone to read this book and I want to have it in all of the editions. Next, I got Nedia Corfors Remote Control, which is like an Afro futuristic uh, novella. I enjoyed it, wasn't crazy about it. I'm thinking about unhauling it because I think someone else might enjoy it more than me. Then I got Crown Chasers by Rebecca Coffendaffer, which is on my TBR for this month. This is a sci-fi that I have only heard amazing things about and I'm very excited about reading it. Hopefully next week. Next, I bought a uh, like teeny tiny edition of uh, Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey, which is the very first books in the Dragons of Pern series, which, as most of you know, I found the majority of the series secondhand. But I was only missing this one, so I read it. I loved it. It is a little bit old school in some way. There's some fat phobia in here, but overall, I thought that it was a really, really lovely book to start on, and it gives me those like sci-fi fantasy vibes and also dragons. Next, I got a very delayed pre-order. This is Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters by Amy Oakden. I'm very excited about reading this one. I had meant to read it earlier, but it's something about different clans. And I believe that the sea is like rising. Not sure. Next, we have Shattered the Sky by Rebecca Kim Wells. I believe that this is sapphic. It has dragons. It's a duology. And I bought the second book, I think, in April. But... Uh, I've been really excited about this one and I just sort of gave myself allowance to go buy it. Next is a long-standing pre-order and this is The Queen's Weapon by Anne Bishop, which is yet another book in her Black Jewel series. It is one of my most beloved adult fantasy series. I still haven't read the second to newest book because I am scared of what it will mean for like my characters. But I am very excited about this one. Not crazy about the new covers, not gonna lie. Also not crazy about the old covers, to be honest. But the entire series is just like perfection in my eyes. It's like my, my black hole of, of love. It's all in there. Now we are coming to April, which is the month where um, I went out of my book buying ban. And um, I bought a lot of books. Like, a lot. There were some pre-orders that came in. But there's also just a lot of things where I was like, I am no longer on a book buying ban. Let me spend all of my hard earned monies. There are a few secondhand books here, so, so that's okay. But let's just start with what I had actually pre-ordered, shall we? Two of them are the second and third book of uh, Lainey Taylor's The Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. This is Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. I believe that these are the 10 year anniversary covers and then Illumicrate uh, sold them in hardcover with really stunning edges and like signed. And I am very excited about rereading the whole series because I never actually read the last one. But these covers like I live I live for them. They're so pretty. Another pre-order was Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth, which is a uh, sort of thriller horror novel that I actually recently read. I really, really loved it. I believe I ended up giving it four and a half stars. It's weird and funky and a little bit creepy and queer. So very queer. And I, I loved it a lot. 
Last pre-order is uh, Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This is a YA fantasy novel with a queer central romance, which we all know that I gag for, so I really wanted it. And then um, I also had a day out with my girlfriend where we went to a whole lot of secondhand bookstores. I did a vlog of it. I will leave it down below. It's very short. It's very cute if you want to watch it. But let's walk through what I got secondhand before I show you what I bought full, fully priced. The pricey prices. Price is right. First off, I found the second and third book in the Shadow and Bone series by Lee Bardugo, which is very funny because it's just come on Netflix. I have the first book in ebook and I plan on reading the whole series soonish. Soonish, yes. Then I found a paperback edition of Uprooted by Naomi Novik, which is one of my most beloved books in the entire world. The other edition that I have of this that is not an ebook is a special edition from Illumicrate that I am scared is going to like get hurt if I read it so I'm very excited about the fact that I found a practically unread edition of it downstairs in my secondhand bookshop. Next I found The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss which I picked up because Leanne from Literary Diversions or something like that speaks about it highly. I'm very excited about reading it. I believe that it is following like several different girls that are like the daughters of famous characters from like way back when. Then we have Wildwood Dancing by Juliette Marillier. I love Juliette Marillier with my whole heart. I believe that this is a bit fantastic. It's a standalone and I'm excited about reading it. It gives me sort of a 12 Dancing Princesses vibe but I don't think that it's an actual reimagining. Then I found an edition of The Secret History by Donna Tart, which I know is like the base of Dark Academia or so I have heard. I know that it's about some theater kids. That's all I got. I will possibly pick this up at one point or it will just till on my shelves until I get rid of it again. So we'll see if that happens. But I am trying to breach. I'm breaching out, team. Next, I found The Blood Print by Asuma Senera Khan. This is a Arabian inspired fantasy. I've never really heard anyone speak about it, but it sounds cool. And there's some sort of uh, religion that's trying to take over. Something like that. Last two that I picked up secondhand is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Everyone pretty much knows this. I have never actually read a whole lot of Brandon Sanderson, but I'm trying to, and I'm finding a lot of his, his books sort of secondhand and I'm fine with that. And then this is a collection of classic folk tales from around the world. And I like to find these things. I like to read about these things. So bye. Next, we're going into the fully priced books that I bought in April, and there is a uh, there is a few. We, I went to the bookstore and I got uh, some books. This is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos, which is a translated piece of fantasy. I believe it's an adult one. Very excited about this one. Have only heard amazing things. It's something about floating cities and this girl with an arranged marriage of some kind, maybe. Then we have Sleeping Giants by, what's his name, Sylvia Nouvel. Nouvel. Um, this one is a sci-fi book where I believe that it's following a young girl who sort of, as a child, finds this like mechanical hand. And then as she grows up, she wants to try and figure out where this like hand has come from. And um, I'm excited about it. I've only heard good things. Next, I ordered Stealing Thunder by Alina Boyden, which is a book that I have been very excited about. It follows a young uh, princess who sort of escaped this uh, palace because her father did not want to accept the fact that she was a young woman. Something about arranged marriage as well. Very excited about it. We have the second book in the Shattered the Sky duology. This is Storm the Earth by Rebecca Kim Wells. More dragons, more queers. Then we have The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry, which is a historical fantasy where we are following this queer witch of some kind. I'm so excited about this one. I found this in my new favorite bookshop, which is called The Feminist Bookshop. It's super cute. I like it a lot. Then I finally picked up Pet by Akwege Omesi, which I read recently. I absolutely love this solid five stars. So excited about the fact that I finally read it. Next, I went into Waterstones to sort of like clear out some points that I had and my girlfriend made me get two books or I said that I wanted two and she said go for it instead of helping me choose. So one of them is Piranesi by Suzanne Clark, which I have heard amazing things about. It's also a really stunning book. I believe it's sort of like literary fiction. It's about a guy who lives in a house and that's it. Then I also picked up Firekeeper's Daughter by Andeline Booley. This is a contemporary novel um, from a First Nation author. I'm very excited about reading this one, but I also prepared for it to hurt my feelings. 
I also finally found a collector's edition of Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, slowly collecting these even though I haven't read the series because I am a terrible, terrible person. Then I picked up a Fire Heart Tiger by Elliot Boudard. I actually read this one. It is a solidly built fantasy in very, very short format. I'm very excited about reading more from this author. Then I also finally got a copy of The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Assad, which is a fantasy novel that I've been very excited about. I have heard people bring ties between this and We Hunt the Flame, which is a book that I really, really love. Also ordered a copy of The Order of the Pure Moon, Reflected in Water by Sen Cho. Very excited about reading more from this author. I'm not entirely sure what this is on about, but the back basically reads like a really bad joke. And then I got a book for my nieces, but there's a little bit more writing in here than I thought there would be, so I might keep it for a little bit longer. This is Not One Damsel in Distress, Heroic Girls from World Folklore. So I'm excited about checking this out with my nieces, hopefully. And that's the wrap up of um, April. So now we're going into May. I wasn't as intense in May as I was in April, but I did pick up some stuff. First off, I finally got my hands on a copy of We Freed the Stars by Hafsa Faisal, which is just the second half of the Araya, Sands of Araya duology. Very excited about reading this one. Then I got another book from the uh, Lumicrate subscription team because I love them very much. This is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. I have only heard amazing things about this one. I believe it has a polyamory rep and quite a lot of other queer characters. And I just, I want to read it right now. Then we have a couple of pre-orders. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I'm very purposely not reading it right now, even though I desperately want to. This is The Chosen and the Beautiful by New Wo. It's great Gatsby, but make it queer and I'm excited. Then we have Hannah Witten's For the Wolf, which is an adult fantasy that like basically is about creepy forest and I love it a whole lot. Next, I finally allowed myself to buy a copy of the Book of Dragons, which is a collection of short stories from a ton of voices in fantasy today. And I've been staring at it for more than a year and it keeps being really expensive. And then it went down a little bit and I was like, I must have it. It's also illustrated by Rarina Kai and I love them. Next, I sort of accidentally, not accidentally, bought a whole lot of Moomin books from my secondhand bookstore downstairs. These are obviously not secondhand, but they were on sale and I have wanted them for quite a while. The Moomin series by Tove Johansson was a huge part of my childhood and I absolutely love it. So this is Comedy in Moomin Land, Finn Family, Moomin Troll, Moomin Land Midwinter, Tales from the Moomin Valley and Moomin Papa at Sea. Next we have another one of my favourite books that I have read so far this year and that is The Bone Maker by Sarah Beth Durst. Absolutely love this. Middle-aged heroes. Just here for it. Weird bone magic. So much humour. Please read this. Then I also finally sort of fell in and let myself buy a paperback edition of the Song of the Lioness by Tamara Pierce. Tamara Pierce is one of my favourite authors. Is no, no, she's not. She's my favourite author of all time. I only have the Song of the Lioness in my fir very first paperbacks in Danish. And I actually really like these covers. I have been on the lookout for hardback covers of it. In case you didn't know about that. It was a, it was a whole saga back in a while ago. And, um, and I just can't find them. So I bought them in paperback. And then we got another pre-order. This is The House of Always by Jen Lyons, which is the fourth book in the A Course of Dragon series. This is a, such a good installment. It is the second to last book. The last book we just got a cover for and a name for and it comes out in 2022 and I can't wait that long. And I love this and I left everything the second that it came in the door because I just had to read it. And I'm just... My babies. We are doing quite well with time, so let's just jump into what I have hauled in June. <laughs> okay, so we are two thirds of the way through June and I have only hauled a little bit stuff. Anywho, first off, I got my Lumicrate edition of The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri, which is my currently favourite book of the year being shared with the unbroken I don't quite know who's in the top yet but this is amazing and beautiful and I want everyone to read it immediately it's also stunning I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up buying a paperback edition of this as well because I just love it so much and I want to put notes in it but I can't do this to my beautiful edition obviously I have the newest book that has come into my house if we're not counting the two books that I had to send back to stupid fucking Amazon they're ruining my books but this is a d wolf and the woodsman by ava reed which is a much anticipated release for me it is based on hungarian and jewish folklore very very excited only heard amazing things 
that we have a pre-order of quite a while ago and this is the Illumicrate set of the Infernal Devices. They are all like really stunningly foiled. I'm not taking them out of this box again. I just, I can't be bothered, but they're very pretty. Next we have my teeny tiny secondhand book haul. The first up is uh, Dragon's Fire by Anne, Anne Todd McCaffrey, which is the one of the later books in the Dragons of Parent series, which we all know that I love and adore and have very slowly gathered. Next I found a copy of Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, which is a series that I have very purposely not started because there are so very many, many books in this series and I simply do not have time or money to buy the whole thing. Then I found a hardback edition of Tempest and Slaughter by Tamara Pierce. I had to have it because I had to have it. And I also picked up The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland and the Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente because Catherine M. Valente is just such a weird author and I wanted to read it. And also it has a dragon on the cover and it's middle grade. So reading a tiny bound. We're getting in to the very last bit of this haul. I went away with my girlfriend back to her family's house and we went into a, a new water zone that I haven't been in and I bought two books. This is Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power, which is a weird thriller horror thing about. I'm excited about reading it because I really loved her Wilder Girls. And I also got The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley, which is Queers in Space. Something about military and something about stuff. I'm very excited. I've heard good things. And then finally, what I am actually currently reading, and that is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviard. Victoria Aviard is mainly known for her Red Queen series. I'm about, I don't know, like 200 and something pages in. I'm enjoying it. It's like very heavy high fantasy, but it might be a little bit info dumpy currently and many POVs. So, yes, there's a lot of books on this floor. Let me count how many I actually have. Just bear. Okay, so um, I have whole day whopping 75 books from January till June and I'm going back on another book buying ban until my birthday. I have shook hands with the girlfriend about it, not allowed to buy anymore. I have a couple of pre-orders, I've had to send two of them back already so maybe that just means that I'm not allowed to have them yet. But yeah, that is the plan. I'm allowed to buy books secondhand but I'm being quite more severe about that and not just randomly buying them and I'm allowed my monthly subscription box and that is it. That is what I can buy currently book wise. Everything else is just gonna have to wait so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe button at the same time so you don't miss out on any other videos from me and also click the little bell which will give you a notification when I put up a new video which I do regularly. This is gonna be a bitch to edit but i hope you're having a great day let me know in the comment section what you have recently hauled are you as much of a hauler as me and if not then remember that i'm proud of you you're doing great and i'll see you next time with another video bye